who aren't familiar with the series, there are two kinds of tires in ISOT IndyCar racing per weekend. There is a set of reds, and you see the red white walls, the red <laughs> side walls, I should say, <laughs> and the black primary tires. Now, the reds are softer compound, but they are faster, but they don't last as long. The black primary tires are a little harder compound, and they last a lot longer, but aren't quite as fast. And something uh, Dario was telling me last night was that the, the problem with the black zone is that they pick up a lot of stuff under caution. You really have to keep these things scrubbed off. That's the biggest problem with them when they've run, and they're under a couple laps of caution. They pick up a lot of debris, which if you don't get that debris off when they throw the green flag, it's like being on ice. And speaking of debris, the reason they haven't gone back to green is they're taking the opportunity to sweep some of these corners, especially before a double foul restart. You don't want all that debris on the outside line and send them in there two by two. So they've learned some lessons from St. Petersburg. Mike Conway is getting a great opportunity after not getting a chance in St. Petersburg. And he, certainly in the test, was a very fast okay, pilot here at this racetrack. He has the fastest race lap so far on lap number 23. He is, however, being shown at this moment in 20th position. Now the cars begin lining up for the two abreast restart, and this is being done basically for one reason, to make the restarts more exciting for you, the race fan. And that is what we're seeing right now as they come side by side. The leader gets his choice of which lane he wants to start in, and he must lead the others on the restart. And here we go on lap number 40. The green flag is out. Here we go. Great start for Will Power. He did what he needed to do. Wow, really close back there between Briscoe and Frank Keedy. Frank Keedy, he's underneath them. Bit of contact. That was inevitable. <laughs> yeah, and that's going to cost Frisco a few spots right there. Marco wow, Andetti. look at these guys going down in this corner. A lot of three of breaths kicked up. Nice move. Oh! oh. Simone Viso, Di Silvestro is involved. That's EJ Viso in the number 59 car. That will be a full course caution because there is damage to those race cars, or at least one of them. And James Hinchcliffe was the third car involved. Yep. He Definitely. Has rear suspension yeah, damage. he will not be continuing. Homacho <laughs> guys had the starter and then thought, well. <laughs> <laughs> Why bother? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was actually looking, I think, over. Uh, Viso's direction, but he had significant damage as well. Here it is once again. Castro Neves comes up the inside, makes it three wide. It looks like and the 59 car just turned down a little bit too tight on Simona. And there was definitely side-to-side -side contact. Viso tried to keep the wheel spinning to keep it going, but then, of course, had contact. Now, let's see. This will be the look at the right front, because that's where the contact happens. She gets squeezed in the middle of the sandwich. I'm not sure she was hit by any one or thing. Just had a little tap on Viso yeah, though to get him turned. Didn't take much of that corner. You're you're on the edge as it is. But. This is Kanan. Can he come behind? Wow! wow. A nice job. Boy, he got he got some spots there. Nice job. <laughs> Simone Di Silvestro is out of her car. And so is EJ Viso. So we'll take another break. Lap 42 out of 90 here at Barber Motorsports Park. Will Power is your leader. The Epic Cycle presented by Michelob Ultra continues on versus tonight at 7. It's the Hell of the North. The world's best cyclists combat the cobblestones of Perry Roubaix and demanding one day trek. The Epic continues tonight at 7 o'clock only on versus. And I learned how to pronounce that from yeah. Jan because <laughs> if you want to know anything about cycling, you ask Jan because yes. he is a cyclist. <laughs> I hey, just need to tell you, I had to step out of the booth here for a second during a commercial. Yeah. I have really missed the smell of ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I mean, I really do. Some people don't like it, but boy, it just smells good to me. 
<laughs> there is EJ Viso's car on the hook, and it's been quite a weekend for EJ Viso. St. Petersburg, of course, he had contact not on one occasion, but on two occasions. A big one here in the final corner. Third time in St. Petersburg. And in fact, that final corner certainly was a bugaboo for EJ Viso. In fact, yesterday, I believe the term was, well, let's watch first of all again this replay, Wally. I think Viso just, he just cut it a little bit too close on Simona. Just a little bit of contact there to get him loose. And then he got hammered by Hinchcliffe. I mean, he was free and clear there until he got until he got pegged there. And as we said earlier, he had a pretty significant crash on Friday here at Barber during warm-ups. Now, Simona Di Silvestro was able to get her car running again, so she is still in the race, but not so with EJ Viso. Let's go down to Robin Miller. Bobby, last year, K KV Racing had three million dollars worth of damage. There goes Alex Tagliani making a quick commit stop. Here's the thing about Viso's team. They spent over three million dollars in parts damage last year. I think that's about what his sponsorship is for the year and we're in race two. So he needs to have a couple clean races here or find some more money. <laughs> All right, there is Simona Di Silvestro as she has got herself back into the competition here. Tony Kanon up into 10th position here. And, and he's been doing it the hard way. I mean, he's been making some really, really gutsy passes today. Up 14 positions from his starting spot. Good run for Tony Kanon, as was the case two weeks ago when he finished in third position. Control to starter and install. One to go at the line. One to go at the line. Let's go to a replay here and look at some contact between Franchitti and Frisco. Wow, that is so close. <laughs> and this one, it gets it comes over back close. In. Comes back in. Oh, wow. there's the bump. Wow. That ain't car footage. It's just incredible. That is so cool to watch. <laughs> All right, Marty. Yeah, Bob, uh, Justin Wilson still struggling with that wrist. We've talked about it quite a bit today, but he radioed to the crew under the caution previous to this one, said it's really hurting me, guys. Again, it's the left wrist for Justin Wilson. He's dealt with this before. He broke his wrist a few years ago at Australia and almost won the race three weeks later, so he knows what he's doing, but in a lot of pain today, once again, took a cortisone shot before the race, trying to numb that wrist just a little bit, but it's not working out. Real quick, just checked with Roger Penske. He said the wheel on Ryan Briscoe's car is fine. No toe out on that car after the two contacts we've seen in the last few laps. If I might go back several years, whenever I see a 22 on an Indy car, I think of Wally Dollenbach, senior in the Sprite car that he drove for many years. That was a cool car. That's right. <laughs> he had a couple different cars. He drove an Eagle for Gurney, yeah. and then uh, I think it was a Hopkins car. 22 Sprite Special. Oh, boy, that was one of my favorites back in the late 60s and early 70s, and we're glad to have Wally Dollenbach Jr. in the booth with us. You know, getting to Justin, though, that, that's one thing, you know, Marty was talking about. I don't think you could come to a tougher place with a wrist injury. And, and oh, by the way, we're going to Long Beach. I mean, yeah. <laughs> these are two really hard racetracks if you have... Uh, you know, hand or wrist injuries. Hey, Wally, the one thing he said, I don't know how I'm going to handle Long Beach next week. He said, I have no idea how I'm going to do that one corner at Long Beach. So. Oriel Serbia is running in fourth position and having a heck of a race. His last win was in 2005 in Montreal, 53 races ago. But I think he's paired up with a good team this year and could very well be a contender. And Bob, the team thinks they are making progress. Oriel said this morning, I don't know if we have enough yet to make Team Penske nervous, but we are getting there. That's a good solid run for those guys today. Just Franchini, Dixon, and Power ahead of Oriel Serbia. 
Nagy will line up to the inside of Dario as we get set for the restart. The pace car brings them very slowly. I, I, you know, Dixon can't beat the leader to the line, but I think he's got to try to stay beside him going through turn one. If he can do that, he can get the spot going through up over the hill in turn two. Here Power got go a really good start last time. Dario looked like he was going to head for the inside there. Again, three abreast. We so see some brakes being locked up. And they go two abreast through the corner. Everybody okay, though, for the moment. Oh, uh -oh. Yes. spoke too soon. You see Pete's is flying off of the car, of some car. And Conway. it's Mike Conway. We have reached the halfway point of this race, but Mike Conway is finished for the day. Major suspension damage on the, front, on the rear of the car. And if it was his front wing that went flying, these cars don't turn very well without a front wing. And he's climbing out rather gingerly, flexing his left leg. And the 22 car of Justin Wilson is also damaged, we understand. Looks clean from that angle. Oh, he's a left, left rear. rear tire. Yep. Here's what happened. I think it happened underneath that camera shot, I believe. We here we go. Get a better shot angle here. Oh, happened early, yeah. I'm not sure that had anything to do with the wing stuff flying. That's a that's a big hit. Oof. Now he got hooked. Got hooked in the left rear, and it just turned that turned that car straight to the left. Mike Conway on the ground. The uh, Omatro safety team is there. And he hit in a portion of the track that did not have tires to protect the arm code. And Bob Justin Wilson here. He didn't say much on the radio about what did happen, but they'll put on four sticker black tires here for Justin Wilson. This will have to throw them out of their fuel range. You have to get to lap 60 to be able to make it all the way to the end, so they will have to at least make one more stop. Wilson back out on course. Well, they say cautions breed cautions, and that's what we've had in the last few minutes. Mike Conway's car is severely damaged on the left side. Go on board with J.R. Hildebrand here and get a better perspective, perhaps, of what happened. Oh, as Takuma Sato has some damage on his car, also right front. This is Hildebrand. We got a little bit. Yep. Well, there is the two cars we just saw. Yep. The puncture on the left rear for Wilson and the wing that we saw flying. Right. And it, apparently, this has nothing to do with what happened to Mike Conway. But that was that hooking with another car, as you saw from the aerial view. Yeah, you see, this whole whole side of the wing is is messing. They'll have to replace that nose section. You were with us on our pre-race show. You heard from Takuma Sato and the fact that his heart really is in Japan, where his family is because of the earthquake and the tsunami. But he is putting on or had a good race going here. He was in seventh position. He's going to have to come in undoubtedly to fix that. And there he is right there. So he gives up seventh position to come in for the repair on the car. Takuma Sato. Driving for KB Racing Technology. Co-owners, Kevin Kalkoven and Jimmy Vassar. Thus the KB. And Sato arrives at his pit stop. And they're going to change that front nose cone. It's all one assembly. It's the front wing and it's the nose cone as well. They can do this in 20, 25 seconds, maybe even a little bit quicker than that in that range. They'll change the tires as well. They're going to scuff threads, make a front wing adjustment, and Sato is back out. Marty? Well, James Hinchcliffe and I started the day here at the Eyes Odd Performance Pit Center, and unfortunately, we end the day here. What happened? 
Yeah, you know, it's uh, we got up to a rough start. You know, I, I was hoping to not make too many rookie mistakes. I made one on lap one. We went around and fell to the back, but the team got me back onto a great strategy, and we were down to two stops, and I think we were running pretty well. And uh, on that restart, you know, Simona, I think, got into EJ. That wasn't his fault, but, I mean, day one of racing school, you learn when you're spinning, you hit the brakes in the clutch, and he just hit the gas. And I went around the outside of him, hoping he just hit the brakes. He pinned it, the back end whipped around and took us out. So, I mean, it's, I mean it'd be easy to make a, a Viso joke right now. We're not going to do that. But it wasn't his fault he spun. He just he put himself in a bad position, and, and then it ended up taking us out, too. So, unfortunate day for the whole team. You know, Newman Haas deserved better than that today. Sprout deserved better than that today. And... But, you know, keep your head up, and we'll move on to the next one. You going to go have a conversation with him? No, there's no point. I mean, if he doesn't know what he did, he's not. if he hasn't learned it yet, he's not going to learn it, so there's no point talking to him about it. All right, thanks, James. Thanks a lot. All right, so clean it up here at Barber Motorsports Park. Mike Conway's wreck getting cleaned up. We'll be back in a moment here on Versus with more IndyCar Racing. On Prix of Alabama, I am with EJ Vizo. From your perspective, what happened out there? Well, to be honest, it's been a very tough start of season. Uh, it's amazing the potential we have in this team, how things are coming out together. But for some reason, I've been uh, pretty much visiting the wall almost every session. Some of them, it's been uh, unfortunate being in the wrong position, in the wrong place as now. And we're back to green flag racing. All right. Let's hope for better things for me, JP. Uh, so my Simona just had a pretty good restart. We took three or four cars in the outside. Was just having a, a very smooth uh, shot into corner five, and suddenly I just got hit by her. I was putting the car back in the track, and Hinge Philip uh, was pretty much avoiding all the cows, and I just got hit by him in the, in the rear tire. A very rough start to the season for EJ Bezo, and we're back to racing, Bob. And we had at least one car off track as we watched them down into turn number five, go to a breast. That's Danny Patrick, of course, on the outside of the green car. A lot of dust again being kicked up. Everybody appears to be running okay, Marty. Yeah, uh, some tense moments down here on pit road, Bob. Uh, a moment ago, Chip Ganassi came over to Will Power's pits. The complaint was from Scott Dixon on the last restart, saying Power had chopped him off twice. They asked IndyCar officials to warn Power not to do that again. And then Mr. Ganassi came down and said, if your guy does that again, I'm going to tell my guy just to take him out. <laughs> Whoa, all right. So there you have it. <laughs> So much for playing nice. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, hey, you don't have many opportunities for sure. And on these restarts it is, you know, a great opportunity. I still think Dixon's got a very fast car. If you could put, apply the pressure to Will Power, which he has had none yet today, uh, it, it could get interesting. Franchini running there in third position in the blue car. Right behind is Ryan Briscoe in yellow. And in fifth spot is Marco Andretti, who is making the comeback from the upside down incident he had at St. Petersburg two weeks ago. Serbia and, and Hunter Ray side by yeah. side. And Elio Castro Nevis right there also. you to uh, just watch and listen to the action here as we go into the IZOD speed zone. going on after these restarts and I think Robin Miller made the point in uh, one of our pre-race shows that uh, hey this this is good stuff I, I like the side-by-side -side restarts the drivers have just got to learn to take care of themselves and each other a little bit well you know we were in the drivers meeting this morning and, and it really came down to Brian I tell you Hunter Ray is on attack right now yeah, he, Serbia. he really wants that spot taking a look Yeah, that's a tough place right there to, to, to make a pass. But anyway, what, you know, what Brian was telling us is, hey, it's up to you. You guys have the steering wheel in your hands. You know, try to give each other enough room, a little bit more respect. Here we have the, the conversation between the two gentlemen that got in the last wreck. 
Hinchcliffe on the right and E.J. Viso on the left. They are having a heated discussion, it would appear. So much for, well, I don't really need to talk to him about it. <laughs> he changed his, oh, there's a, you know, looks like reconciliation. Okay, all right, all's well. See you in, in uh, Long Beach. <laughs> We continue to watch Ryan Hunter Ray here all over the rear wing of Oriole Serbia. This is the battle for sixth position. Serbia has it, and Ryan Hunter Ray would like to have it. There's two things going on here. The obvious one is that Serbia is on blacks, and Ryan Hunter Ray is on the faster reds. They've done that on purpose so you can get this Ooh, kind of battle. Here comes the setup. And here he's got a good run. Up. Here he comes. Now, if he doesn't uh, blow it wide, uh, nice, uh, nice move. But you're almost, you're almost a sitting duck, aren't you? Oh, when, you're, when you're on the blacks and somebody's racing you on the reds. That's the whole idea behind yeah. it. They're trying to come up with people on different strategies. I said there was two things going on, and that is I believe that Serbia is still on a two-stop strategy. We know that Ryan hunter Ray is on three. So you have one that's having the same fuel, one who can go for it, and you have the difference in tires. That made for some good racy disparity so you can get past it. Ryan Hunter Ray has five pushes of the Honda assist. Ooh, a little and out of shape there. Cachaneva's got a little bit loose. Annika Patrick's right behind him. That's ninth spot. Cachaneva's has really been wrestling with that car today. I've been noticing he's really he's had his hands full, under braking everywhere. Just does not have the grip on that car I think you would like. She's right on top. I'll tell you what, she might be able to pull out and try to get a breaking move here, and she does. She's taking a look. Danica trying to get the spot from Elio, and she gets it. Danica's having a good race here this afternoon. Now, again, Danica is on the reds. Cassian Evans is on the blacks. That moves her up to eighth. Hey, Bob, it's getting uh, nail-biting time up front here. About seven laps away, six laps away from pit stops for the 12 car of Will Power and also the nine car of Scott Dixon. And what's going to be key is if it's under green, the in and out lap. Jan's been talking about it all day long. Scott Dixon is one of the best in the business at making up time, coming to pit road and leaving pit road. But can he make up the gap he has right now and beat Power out of the pits? That's going to be a huge key. Another key, Marty, is going to be, can one of those two go a lap longer? And we've obviously spent quite a bit of time, and you told the story about Scott Dixon's fuel-saving capability. If you can go a lap longer than a willpower, that has an even bigger difference than in and out laps. And, and the other thing, Jan, real quick, on pit road last time, Scott Dixon put it into gear just a little bit too early. Mike Hall told him, wait for me next time. Wait for me. You almost went too early, and we weren't quite ready. So he's got to, you know, he's trying to slow the driver down on pit road, but also beat the other guy off of pit road. Don't count out Frank Kitty. He's right there, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Quietly been moving his way forward and right there. Got the leaders in front of him, and he can see them. All three of those that you just mentioned stopped together on the last lap. So we'll get a good indicator of if someone can go farther. 55 out of 90 laps completed in the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Will Power leads Dixon, Franchitti, Briscoe, and Hunter Ray. Bob Jenkins, Wally Dollar back, Jan Vikas here in the booth, Lindy Thaxton, Marty Snyder, and Kevin Lee are down on pit lane, along with Robin Miller as we are on the air for the first time in 2011 on Versus with the Eyes on IndyCar Series. The race got off to a great start as far as the initial start, but not when you get down to turn number five. Contact on the right there, that's Rafael Matos. J.R. Hildebrand, pow! Unfortunately, that knocks out Rafael Matos. He has damage. Gets back to the pits and underway again on 26. Aggressive move to Kumasato. Goes up the inside on Castro Neves. Everything's looking good until they touch wheels. 
Sato keeps it running, but obviously loses quite a few spots in the process. Graham Rahal tries to make a move on JR. Hildebrand thought that JR would give him a little more room. Unfortunately, that knocks him back, but they both also keep it running. Then, Alex Tagliani, we had just talked about. Amazing, everyone's kept the engine running. Not the case for Alex Tagliani. Spins on the next to last corner, has to bring out a full course caution. And here is a three-way sandwich. This is what EJ Viso and James Hinchcliffe were just talking right there. See, he stayed on the throttle. That's what James Hinchcliffe didn't like. We saw they just had a discussion on pit road. But they shook hands. Lap 46, that's the overhead, and I think that was Danica Patrick, the teammate of Mike Conway, that made contact, and that was a huge hit for Conway. We've ducked. Is this back that's to happening live? right now? <laughs> wow, that's not Briscoe. a recap. Briscoe, Briscoe is in the trap. In the trap. Wow, Ryan Briscoe, one of the guys running up front all afternoon. And we understand that he had contact with Ryan Hunter Ray. Let's see how it occurred. On board with Ryan. Oh, wow. Oh. That, that's a tough place to make a pass right there. First of all, when you hit a curb, I, like where you're going, you're not going to turn. You're going to go no. straight, and that's what exactly that happened. He hit that curb, and it just launched right. him at Briscoe. And, that and was you know what? Ryan Briscoe gave him room in a place that you most likely wouldn't, but Ryan Briscoe was trying to do the right thing. He gave him room knowing that he was trying to make an aggressive move, but like you say, Wally, the moment that Hunter Ray hits the curb and flies through the air, there's no control you're, you're like you a missile. That. Yeah. And yeah. you know what is he thinking right now? I That's two done. races yep. with damaged cars, yep. very few points. He was running fast, gave a guy room, and he's thinking, what do I have to do? But, but even, even at that, Jan, if you're going to give a guy room to make a pass there, you almost got to get out of his way. That's a really, really tough corner to even run through there side by side. Well, I think he was trying to defend and said, oh, my goodness, he's coming up the inside. I got to try and do something. This is turn five now, before the actual incident happened. Okay, so here's where you're, you're coming up, and, I, and obviously he's right there. He's going to take a take a look. This is just not the best place to do that. And, you know, and I think even Hunter, I think Hunter, before he committed himself, said, this isn't the best place to do that, because you could see the right front was locked up. I don't think he wanted to be on that curb, so just, you know. That's a judgment call you got to make right now. Yeah. And uh, both guys lose on that one. Briscoe climbs out of his wrecked race car. But once again, he will not have a good finish, as was the case last week, uh, last race, two weeks ago at St. Petersburg. You know, I? back in the day, if that would happen and somebody had a run on you, you pull over in front of them and block them so that they can't do that right. to you. But they're not allowed to do that. Right. So. Unfortunately, Ryan Hunter Ray, uh, after hitting that curve, just speared poor Ryan Briscoe, who, in my opinion, wasn't at fault. Does, does Ryan Hunter have nose damage at all? Well, we'll find out because we have a lot of pit stops that are being made, including Ryan Hunter Ray. And Bob, these are pit stops that could decide the race. This pit window is just short of what everyone needs, so they're going to need a little bit of caution here to make sure they can get all the way to the end. Will Power all the way at the end of pit road requested red tires because he wants to help them on the restart. These are scuff red tires for Will Power. One turn of wing and Sunoco fuel in. He will easily win on the pit, win off pit road, race off pit road against Scott Dixon, who has red stickers on, and Danica beat Frankie out as well. Wow, she gained four positions moving up to third spot how about that how do you wow. do that <laughs> that's a fast pit stop bob danica did not take tires uh, or strategist george uh -huh. Coates told me they did not do that because the ones on her car are just as good as the ones that she would have taken wow okay and the reds good, move. good call <laughs> Yeah, that gives her a considerable amount of tracks per acquisition, and we've said all race how important that is. Nice. Good call. Yeah, so that was a good call. 
Dario now back to fourth as Danica Patrick will restart in third position. Still waiting to get Ryan, uh, rather Ryan Briscoe's car off of the racetrack. Now the other aspect of that pit stop, the reason you wouldn't take tires, she was not on the same sequence as everyone else, so she didn't need as much fuel. So if you're going to have a faster fuel stop, you can save quite a bit of time if you decide not to go for tires. See, they, had, they weren't even faking it. They simply knew that all they needed was fuel, and this is going to be just as soon as the moment that they see a little bit in the overflow, and that's going to be quicker, certainly, than the leaders who needed a full load. So can they go the rest of the way now? Marty was saying that, which I agree, this is just shy of what they wanted. Yeah. It all depends on when they go green. Every one of these laps, you're getting three times the fuel economy that you're going to get under green. So it depends when they throw it. Every single one of these pace laps gives you that better chance of making right. it to and the end. So and you're suggesting that we're going to go green from now on, too. Yeah.